Everybody ready? Good. Then let's get going. A really warm welcome back. Well, it's getting late in the year, which means there's all sorts of yuck coming up off the road and off the back of the car onto the front of the caravan. So now more than ever, it is towing cover time. And in this video and the next video, I want to take you back a few years to when I took a, a fairly cheap off the peg, off the peg, yeah, that's the right word, a fairly cheap off the peg towing cover and uh, made it bespoke for the front of this caravan because nobody supplied one that fitted specifically this van. There just aren't enough of this particular van in the country to make that sensible. So I took a standard universal fit one and did a few mods to make it fit beautifully and to make it much easier for me as a little short ass five foot something person uh, to fit the thing all by myself. So let's get into the first video. So to set the scene, it was 2017 and I'd just brought our Reba Feeling home and she'd got absolutely filthy on the drive back, despite it being mostly on the motorway. So I knew a towing cover was something that I was interested in, but I'd also heard the rumours about them scratching front windows, so I was also quite cautious about what I was going to do. Being the owner of quite a rare caravan, you quickly come to realise that many things can be made bespoke for anybody except you. Mind you, hardly surprising, you know, there's no money in spending hours and hours measuring up for something bespoke if you'll only end up then selling six or seven of the things. So, there was no lovely thick neoprene uh, bespoke cover option for us. It was a standard fit model that we needed. At the time, we had a choice of some random online brands, Protec or Specialized covers. I wanted to go for a brand name uh, given the concerns that I had about scratches on the front window. And I'd seen both the Protec and the Specialized fabrics in person at the NEC the year before, so I knew they seemed okay. So the reality came down to it, and perhaps it was very shallow, uh, but it all came down to colour in the end. At the time, Protec were only selling in green or blue, but I could get a universal Specialized one in black and grey. And considering that the caravan was white and grey and that the car was black, you know, I thought it would look a bit odd with a green or a blue cover in the middle. So honestly, uh, a darker black or a grey one would look much, much better. And indeed, it does look absolutely fine. So thankfully, though, Protec covers have uh, caught up with monochrome coordination that people might want. So nowadays you can get it in light grey or black as well. So if that suits your combination better, then that is fabulous. Anyway, so I bought a Topro light. I got it online and I had to go at fitting it. Now, obviously our caravan is shorter than most, so I thought I might have to do a bit of hemming and take a bit off of the top. But it never occurred to me, being new to towing covers, that getting the thing on would be such a rigmarole. Anyway, I figured this issue was uh, because it was the first fit and our caravan was much narrower than the cover itself. So we had to take quite a lot of time taking the slack out of the edges and so on. So after spending quite a long time getting the fit perfected, two things were absolutely obvious. The first was that I was going to have to modify the lower edge, as we had far too much sort of bulk hanging around, hanging out down there. And that was at least unnecessary and a bit messy. And it was possibly a little bit dangerous, you know, if there was lots of fabric came loose and started flapping around, that wouldn't be good. But point two, you know, it was quite obvious that this was, wasn't going to be a job for one single five foot something person on their own. And at that stage, the kids weren't really that useful. So I wanted to be able to do things uh, single-handed if I needed to. Nevertheless, you know, I struggled on with it like that for a few months and tried to think about actually how can I make this work for us. And then there was one of those random Eureka light bulb moments. Although looking back, I can't remember which came first. The materials receipts I've got are all dated October 2017. So I'm sure somebody will tell me. But uh, it was about that time that Protec actually released their Reba touring jacket. So someone will tell me what the relative dates are. Uh, 
But the brainwave I had was exactly the same sort of idea. So to slice this specialised cover in two and to make it into more of a jacket than a single sheet that went on the front uh, by popping a zip into the middle. And that would mean that I could put each side on independently rather than trying to slide each side up into the awning rail bit by bit, side to side, like trying to get on an excessively small pair of tights when you're hot and sticky or you've just got out of the shower. Trust me, chaps, it's really not easy. And that was exactly how I felt about the towing cover. Now, since then, of course, ProTech have released their, their jacket style of cover for all sorts of caravans. Anyway, where were we? Oh yes, yeah, so it was especially difficult putting the cover on onto my caravan because I had the bike rack on the front as well and that was really in the way. So something definitely had to be done. And so to the sewing table, more commonly known as the kitchen table, and a scary cut right up the centre of the towing cover. So at first I fitted two open-ended zips to allow me to open the cover from either the top or the bottom. But as you'll see in part two, after I tried out the modded cover Mark 1, I swapped that for a very long uh, single piece open-ended zip from Brian Park Camping uh, because I found that once the cover was in use, it was quite obvious that two separate zips just weren't going to work. For example, the lower zip didn't come open high enough to get into the gas locker properly and the top one didn't come down low enough uh, to be able to let enough light into the front window. So these two individual pieces had to be replaced by one long one. Anyway, I didn't want the reverse of the zip rubbing on the window, so I put in a nice piece of spare uh, navy Berber fleece that I had left over. That's the big bobbly stuff, so super padded. And I folded that in half so it was all lovely and tidy and soft on the window. That was left over from just a previous project I was doing around the house. And on the front I also put a weatherproof flap, so made out of some black waterproof fabric, a Kodora type, and that kept the water from going directly through the zip. Of course, if you're doing 55 or 60 uh, down the motorway in the rain, then water's going to get in behind the cover. Uh, either throw it directly because most of it's breathable or pushed in from the edges. But that just keeps it a bit tidier and makes it look good as well. Then I pop some Velcro on to keep the weatherproof flap closed and the zips all tidy. And then I restitch the reflective triangle back onto the top. And also I pop some chunky snap fastener uh, plastic buckles onto the top and the bottom to help make fitting much easier.
And ta-da! A more easily usable by one woman and her little right, helpers so cover. You need to, uh, yes, that's what those blue arrows mean. You need to ride round. Yeah, following the correct way. And then I'll quickly come back right. Yeah. Right, have we got clean front? I have to go a bit on the glass to get back in. Okay. Just a quick note before I end this episode that it's obviously very important that your lights can be seen when you've got a towing cover on. And not just important, of course, but also a legal requirement. And this cover deals with that by setting some pockets into the lower part of the cover itself and including these uh, pucked shaped lights in the pack. So these are push on, push offs, and they live in the cover all the time. So you just push from the outside when you want to turn them on. And they're powered by AAA batteries. So obviously you need to remember to switch them on if there's any chance at all that you, you'll need your marker lights on at any point during the drive. And obviously if you're going on a very long drive, then you better carry some spare batteries as well. So they do have the downsides. The pack does come with some clear plastic though, the, the sort of window plastic. So you can cut holes in the cover to let your own light shine through and next time I'll show you how I did that uh, but also how I got rid of the excess fabric in the sides to make this universal cover fit like a bespoke glove. So I hope that was fun watching me sew. Uh, in the next video I'm going to make the cover even better and we're going to do something about the flappy excess of fabric at the sides of the cover and uh, get the lights to show through so I can use my proper road lights. So I'll catch you in part two. But thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.